Tell me you see in your vlog, you're gonna be married. After he's married. Oh hell no, Give up his light to the O. He told me he'd go be a martyr for me. This is one part I think is gonna be really, really good. Boom, we're back. Another day in the life. We are joined by one of my good friends, Umar Ashraf, probably one of the biggest traders in the space. He's done about $20 million in his trading career. Basically, one of the only traders to actually show proof and verify. I love how Forex traders or traders in general will do anything but show proof. And proving it is the easiest thing, but they'll show anything but proof. That's why I love Umar so much. Not only is he an awesome trader and a transparent trader, but he's also an epic guy. Behind the scenes, I've known him for a year now, spending time with him at his office or just dinners, meeting people, networking, everything that we've done over the last year. I see how he carries himself. And he's truly one of a kind. And I think this podcast that we did with him was epic. So make sure you do go check that out. But yeah, a day in the life with Umar Ashraf and my brother, Umer Asim and myself, Wakar Asim. There we go. Yo, man. Good. How you doing? Nice to meet you, bro. How are you doing? So you guys, you can kind of tell you guys are brothers. Bro, you're older, yeah, why is that? 29, right? Old, <laughs> I should have it 28. Yeah, bro, if you get four snores, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't get better. What did you do for your birthday? Anything special? Or? Nothing, bro. I've never been a birthday guy. Yeah, just hung out. Yeah. Hey, ladies and gents, I'm joined today with a good friend of mine. It may be a familiar face to you, Mr. Omar Ashraf. So yeah, we we met a year ago now on a podcast. We've been meaning to lock in a podcast, but uh, I guess we just kept hanging out, kept talking and uh, friendship developed, but eventually, you know, we've aligned aligned uh, an episode. So we're going to go deep. I think because we've had a year of friendship, it's not going to be the typical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when did you get started? And uh -huh. all that. I'm going to I'm going to jump into more higher level topics, I think, and see what we can get out of you that you haven't had online before. So it should be a fun one. Uh, let's see how it goes. Doing good, man. I'm excited for this pod. This is one pod. I think it's going to be really, really good. Let's see how it turns out. This is rolling. Okay, let's jump yeah. right in. Just go. Hey ladies and gents, welcome back to another episode. I'm joined by a good friend of mine and hopefully, I think this will be our best episode yet. Uh, so you said, I want to be a billionaire, not for the money, more for the rooms it can make me enter. You know, when people hear someone say they want to be a billionaire, I think everyone looks at it as like, oh my God, this guy's so full of himself. They care so much about money. It's not about the money. Because when we play business, that's our trophy. The higher degree we play at, the better we are. Having the B mark is that trophy. Going after it and building after it isn't what I'm directly doing. But when I go into like, hey, we are getting involved in this project or that project, this project has the potential to be worth a billion dollars. We see it. It's there. It's possible. It's well, well let, me tell, uh, let me let me ask you more how was that one for you? That's good, bro. That's good. That's good good questions. I think uh, because you have a trading background, it, it, it allows you to go deeper and you also know about my trading. Uh, instead of going into what's a journey. I didn't want to focus on, because the round table we had focused a lot on technical stuff. Yeah. Where we had our back and forth on like, should you scale up on risk if, if you're going through a winning period? You were like, yes, double down. I was like, I don't like doing that. So we had our technical back and forth. So I wanted to focus this one on just more career, life and and growth over the last few years. We'll lace in parts into the vlog, but I think in general, you just have to go watch it. We'll be on Titans up tomorrow, so make sure you check that one out. So although me and Omar are great friends and we have very aligned views and very aligned values on certain nuanced details within trading, we have different opinions. One of them was how you manage your risk because that's how I've always practiced because that's maybe how my mindset is. I'm a little bit more risk averse. I never deviate away from risk management. I always risk the same amount between 0.25% and 1% per trade. So if I start an account at the beginning of the year, my growth will be up and down, but it'll be a linear growth. Slow Slowly linear growth. Whereas Umar is kind of on the side of double down. When you have a good trade, double down. When you are in profit, double down, scale in. So his growth looks like this, linear, and then goes parabolic, goes exponential by the end of the year, which is cool to see, which is why he's also scaled up to $20 million and I have not. So in the podcast, we've discussed a lot of the beliefs that we have, challenge each other in a very mature way, giving our opinions, giving our experience, giving our perspective. And that makes for a very wholesome and educative podcast. So the reason I don't like increasing my risk is not that I don't like making money. It's a case of, I would rather optimize other things. So if you watch my other videos you've seen me doing about the spinning the plates analogy where i'm like people focus on one thing and just spin that plate and all the other plates come crashing down you know that thing in the circus what i like to do is well you have to balance all the plates you have to spin them all so the idea being you have your win rates you have your risk reward your trade frequency trade duration all of these plates that are in a delicate equilibrium so when it comes to profitability omar is like increase your risk and you know you can double down in trades i'm more like i like my risk like this i like to improve my win rate i like to improve my risk reward and i spin those plates to scale up also the idea of let's say i double down 
down on a trade because it's a better trade and then it happens to be a loss and then I reduce risk on another trade because I think it's a more risky trade and then it happens to be a win or that win that I've reduced my risk on I didn't get the full profit I should have got and then the good trade that I lost unfortunately I lost more than I should have so I don't like skewing my data whereas Umar on the other hand says if you have your data and you know this is a profitable setup you know it's got an 80% win rate it's a very high probability setup add more size because how do you expect to scale and it was a very good question you asked me and challenged me on and it's definitely food for thought you know we did this one before with my with my brothers a younger brother and because there's a ceiling here somehow my youngest brother's hit we'll throw a clip he smashed as hard he's good went straight up no one do that today i'm gonna smoke both of them he'll smoke me a trade but i'll smoke him in golf he probably is man he probably is <laughs> It's, it's fine. <laughs> You're going to the first shot on camera, bro. Alright, we'll get better. Uh, oh. Shit! That's what I told you. Yo, that Two seconds earlier. Because there's a ceiling here somehow, my youngest brother smashed his heart, he's good, went straight up, and I think broke something with his feet. No one do that today. <laughs> what the hell? What did I warn you guys? I literally said at the beginning, don't smash the wall. But what did it bounce off? It bounced something that almost went to my head. Man. Well, they should probably move that further. I was scared for my life for a second, man. I don't know what it is about my brothers, but they are some crazy guys. So Zaheer, my youngest brother, we have a 10 year age gap. So I like to fly them out to Dubai quite often. Last time they were in Dubai, we went to the same suite and he did the same thing. He smashed the ball and hit the ceiling. And then my other brother, Omer, who is a doctor, radiologist, I thought he'd be a little bit more mature, a little bit more sensible, does the same thing on the first shot. Ricochets off the wall and almost hits another friend. Crazy. <laughs> Harder to see. My brother would give up his life to the O. He told me he'd go be a martyr for me. Said that she ready to come to the six. I hit up Pauline to charter the P. Ain't really leave, but I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm riding around in Atlanta with sad. So what I always like to do is after a podcast, always go out with the guests. So whether that's a dinner, whether that's a boat event, or in case of Umar, he's a good friend of mine. We've already done all of the above. So we thought, let's go play some top golf. We're all trash. No one can really hit the ball properly. But just an excuse to have some fun, smash the ball as far as you can. And in the meantime, have a great conversation off camera, talking about life, business, entrepreneurship, trading, scaling, the industry. It's always great to get advice from someone I look up to, someone I respect a lot, and someone as I see as an older brother almost. It's only one year older. Uh, but also introduce Umar, my good friend, to my actual brother Omer, uh, and then also them developing a friendship. All right, guys, so we did a bit of golf. We were all terrible, so it is what it is. But mainly, we spent some time with Umar. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Norman as well. Thank you for coming through. Thank you very much, bro. First time playing top golf. Eh? Thank you. Very so much. we were at top golf, and now what do we need to do? Mashallah. Look at this. This wasn't even for the cameras. <laughs> brother Omer, brother Khalid, brother Ibrahim. They all took initiative. Well, Khal, drop, drop us some knowledge. Like, mashallah, you've been studying Medina for what, five years now? Yeah, seven actually. But... You, know, you know what they say? Always look at people below you, not above you. Because if you're always looking at people below, uh, below you, you'll always be yeah. appreciating. If you're looking at people above you, you'll always be jealous, envious, and always feel like you don't have enough blessings. I didn't tell the camera, but I actually did morning yoga, sunrise yoga yesterday. Uh, and now we're at some another Instagrammable spot. Umar, where are we, bro? He's bringing me to all these Instagram spots. Yeah. Yesterday, can you imagine? I did yoga, sunrise yoga. Where, where are we now? We're at a desert cafe. It's like a cool spot. Look, this is the real side of Dubai. We don't do the haram stuff. No nightclubs, no beach clubs. Desert Karak Chai. That's what we do. Umar, draw some dawah, please. We go around, we take it in turn, dawah circle. Look, think about it. I can't just. I think think has to, bro, I need to think hey, about it. Hey, you're, you're the only married brother here. You need to give us some. <laughs> Bro, I need to think about it as well. Right, oh, hello, how are you? <laughs> this you can take orders and pay, okay? We had a thing called Weekend Squad. I know it sounds a bit childish, but every single weekend, for about a year and a half, we would have a squad activity, going to the desert, going to the mountains, every single weekend for about a year and a half. And then Ibrahim got married. Bro, what happened to Weekend Squad? No. What, what happened? Wally got married. Wally got married, disappeared. You got married, disappeared. I only got married in December. It's only been a month and a half. Yo, oh, stop from us. This is a nightclub. You go bow for the result, nothing to discuss, cause I think when you buy it, you fall down without any doubt. I'm a me, I'll be a doubt. I'm not going to be. What did you get? I got a tiramisu, and that will do. Oh, that was so weak. I'm sorry. I'm getting towards the end of the day. <laughs> what do you get, Omar? Got the mango crispy chicken roll. Do you put pineapple in your pizza? So you put mango in your sandwich? Yeah, why not? That's bad. No, pineapple's fine. Mango is a bit dodgy. <laughs> Alright, so as I've said, after we went to Namos, been there too many times. It's never as good as you think. Urla, been there so many times. It's never as good as you think. Another Instagrammable spot. It was, bro. You had to pay for the fire. You had to pay extra for the fire. You had to buy a blanket. 
I was just confused the place. But it was good vibes. Hopefully the montage looked good. There we go. Um, that's probably going to close out the vlog. So thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.